I was born and raised here in the port, and this is a place that really concerns me a lot, especially as it talks about and think, start thinking about climate change. I think that the disconnect often people have is when you hear the word climate change, people kind of distance themselves. I think it's a really human thing, okay? Like, we don't understand it, therefore it doesn't really pertain to me. A lot of people like to think that climate change is a distant threat, something that we don't need to worry about, but the reality of it is that it's already affecting us today, and it's only going to get worse over the next decade. The city of Cambridge is comprised of a number of different neighborhoods. The Port neighborhood is one of the most densely populated neighborhoods in the city, and this is where our office is actually based. I've found this to be a very tightly knit community. There are a number of programs and services administered out of the Port neighborhood. We have the Boys and Girls Club, we have the Community Arts Center. We work very closely with one of the oldest settlement houses here called the Margaret Fuller House. I have the honor of leading the second largest local health department here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We are responsible for the health needs for, for all those who live, learn, work, and play here in the city. In this video, we share issues identified in the port area and strategies that might protect resident health. We're reaching out to you, the residents, to share information and to learn from you. Amongst the most important changes will be more days that are extremely hot. Increasing year by year, most of the days in summer could reach temperatures over 90 degrees within the next 30 years. You know, the elderly and sick and the young and even infants and babies and stuff, I think those are for obvious reasons. You know, their age makes them more vulnerable to certain extreme um, incidents. Another serious concern is flooding. Increases in rain and snow, as well as a rise in sea levels, are resulting in more flooding. Storms are getting more frequent and stronger. Some areas of the city will flood more. Some areas of the port have flooded in the past. A couple years ago when um, there was a flood in what I'll call the uh, Cherry Pine Corridor, basically it was a flash flood that kind of happened kind of midday, three or four. And in this instance, uh, many of the basements were flooded, you know, two to three feet of water. Um, and it happened so quick that people had to react and kind of band together as neighbors to help one another out. As a nurse who works with families that have children with asthma to help make their homes safer, I do know that flooding can be a big problem. Flooding brings moisture problems and that can cause mold and mildew and even destroy housing components that can lead to pest infestations such as roaches, mice, and rats. People that are most at risk are those who are living in flooded areas, people who reside in basements, people with asthma or other chronic diseases such as COPD or emphysema, and those who are very sensitive to heat, such as the elderly and the very young. We want to be having a conversation about preparedness and what you can do to make yourself, your family, your neighborhood, your community more resilient. Climate change is real. The re-impacts of climate change are real. So we're asking residents to do their part to prepare, but all we're also doing our part. Our emergency preparedness unit, as well as our environmental health unit, they work very closely with partners to look at the impacts of climate change. In particular, they work with the planners, they work with the fire department, they look at the alignment of our plans to ensure that we have the appropriate allocation of resources to support residents, especially in times of crisis. One thing that we're trying to promote is to make sure that people sign up for emergency alerts. Uh, the City of Cambridge has a system called Code Red. You can go to the city's website and sign up for that. One thing that people can do is, is make a simple go kit. So if you had to evacuate on short notice, you would have things that you could just grab and go. Uh, you could fill a backpack with a flashlight and batteries, uh, three days supply of clothing, uh, maybe some canned food. If you have pets, you want to think about their needs as well. The best way to prepare for any kind of trauma or event is to know your neighbor. If your uh, neighbor who's fortunate enough to have central air and your neighbor who may be elderly or may be um, a little more fragile could spend some time in your house during the hotter times, that might be one way. Just neighbor to neighbor stuff. To me, that's what the most important thing is. If we do that, then everything's golden because we're accountable to one another. 
I know we have a close relationship with the community arts center, so if something happens and they need to use our space or we need to use their gym, that's an opportunity that we have. And I think that's one of the things that is great about what's going on in Cambridge, that there is a collaborative effort to share resources and identify needs. We can do this if we want to. We have to think with some intentionality. We have to commit to each other and accept the fact that when crisis happens, we're strong enough to get through it. And once we can do those things, I think we'll be in a better place. We already have a community that works together. We have the creativity, the technology. Now's the perfect time to bring those three things together and make a big change. We all want to hear what you think. This is your community. This is your neighborhood. Get out there, have a discussion, see what everybody thinks. Bring it to us. Let's get some ideas rolling and let's figure out what we can do. I truly believe that it takes a village to raise a healthy community. The reason we put this video together is to share with you our thoughts, but also to hear from you directly. Please feel free to contact us if you have any suggestions, any questions, and any opportunities for us to learn. And also, you can learn more about the work of the health department by visiting cambridgepublichealth.org. We love Cambridge. Let's come together to protect our community.